1944, two men came together to found a startup here in Lagos, Nigeria. They were an unlikely pair. The first was an 80-year-old journalist by the name Herbert Macaulay, and his co-founder was half his age. He was a 40-year-old journalist as well, Namdi Azikiwe, from famously known as Zeke. The startup they founded was the NCNC, National Council for the Nigeria and the Cameroons. The problem NCNC was founded to solve was a problem of colonial rule in Nigeria. And the solution that the founders of the NCNC sought to bring was independence for Nigeria through a system of multi-party democracy. Within two years, though, Herbert Macaulay will be, there, will be dead. He died on a fundraising trip, raising funds for the NCNC. But Zeke carried on, now as president, and led NCNC to play a crucial role in helping Nigeria to attain independence. In fact, it was another NCNC member, also a journalist, Antonio Naharo, who actually moved, made the motion to move for Nigeria's independence in the legislation. And so Nigeria entered this phase of independence and democratic rule, really led by a, a movement driven by journalists. However, within a decade, a part of that success would fade because we had a series of coups and counter coups that replaced democratic rule with military dictatorship. Almost 50 years later, in 1994, in a home in Ikeja GRE, the home of a retired general, another startup was founded. That startup was called Nadeko. The founders of that startup were mostly retired generals lawyers and politicians. The problem they were trying to solve was extended periods of oppressive military rule. And in place of that military rule, they sought to bring, again, sustained multi-party democracy, but also the vision that they espoused as they transformed into leaders of political parties was also that Nigeria would find a way to eliminate poverty, and start to introduce widespread economic prosperity into the nation. In less than 10 years, this movement, led by ex-military generals, lawyers, and politicians, led Nigeria into democratic rule. But then, 20 years on today, looking back, there's a question about whether the other major goal economic prosperity was achieved. When I think about where Nigeria is today, we have more than half of the population living on less than $2 a day and about 50% unemployment among the youth. It's very clear that the economic prosperity goal was not achieved. It's a bit more personal for me because over the last two years, I've been involved in providing an opportunity for the most brilliant Nigerian graduates to launch their careers as world-class software engineers. We've had more than 36,000 people apply for this opportunity to receive accommodation, feeding, everything that would prevent them from becoming world-class software engineers and launch their careers. Of the 36,000, out of the top 100, we found that more than 70% of them had been unemployed for more than, three, for more than two years. And we had a prize for the very best. And the guy who won that prize had been, for the last two years, teaching in Southern Kaduna, earning 3,000 Naira a month. That's less than $8 a month. It's, it's saddening that the very best of a generation are wallowing in poverty and really lacking access to the opportunities to fulfill their potential. And so we can determine that this movement, the movement led by ex-generals, lawyers, and politicians, 
succeeded, but only partially. They got the democracy, but were unable to deliver on the economic prosperity. And so there's a need for a new movement, a movement that would start now. And I think that just as the journalists were best placed to lead the first movement, and the ex-generals, lawyers, and politicians were best placed to lead the second movement, I think this movement is particularly suited for the leaders from the tech sector. Over the last two decades, technology has become the main engine of economic value creation in the world. Seven of the top 10 most valuable companies in the world are now tech companies. And so just as in the second industrial revolution, which was powered by manufacturing, nations like America were able to move themselves out of poverty within one generation, followed by countries like Korea, Japan, and most recently China, Technology, the driver of this third and fourth industrial revolution, presents an opportunity for a nation like Nigeria to move itself out of poverty in one generation. And really, the movement is already afoot in Nigeria. From the tech sector, we've seen over the last two years at least two billion dollar companies emerge in Nigeria. So I think the chances are really high that this sector can deliver. But we want to be mindful that just as the first movement and the second movement only achieved partial victories. So to ensure that this movement achieves a more complete victory over the next two decades, there are two ideas that I can, that I can offer. The first is that we have to make the leadership of this movement inclusive. Imagine yourself as being appointed to lead Nigeria to the imaginary special World Cup 12 months from now. You only invite 11 players to camp and you take a year to prepare, develop your strategy and so on. When you get there, you realize that you actually could have had 22 players and needed 22 players. And so you bring 11 more. The contribution of that second 11 is going to be suboptimal. The whole team is not going to have benefited from their contributions. And whenever they do get to come on the field, they're going to look like the least talented players because they do not understand the game plan at all. And so we have to make sure that the leadership on this table is inclusive. By this, I mean we have to ensure that the women have a place at the table. Notice that movement one and two, the leadership was comprised almost entirely of men. No wonder that some parts were missing. In addition to ensuring women at the table, we should also make a conscious effort to bring in people from other regions of this nation. Right now, the tech sector is concentrated in Lagos and is dominated by men from the South. Second idea has to do with mission and purpose. The first and second movements started very strong. You see, at the beginning of these movements, when there was a very clear enemy, in the first movement, the colonial masters, in the second, the military dictators, it's, it was easier to be really disciplined, really focused. But then, with the first wave of success, comes the fruits of that success, and with that, distractions. The, at the beginning of a startup, the fear of outright failure is a very present enemy. You're mindful of losing your investors' money, and you're really passionate to ensure that this dream that you're carrying would actually see the light of day. But then, after if you're lucky enough, the product launches, you have customers, you reach five million, you raise investments. The, the likelihood that you will completely fail begins to go away. And then with success comes invitations to speak at events, TED Talks, opportunity to serve on boards, and even now new ideas. And now you have the money and the network to try them out. All these things have typically led to founders not being able to take their companies all the way to the post billion dollar status that this country so badly needs. When I think to myself it, with my new startup of how to guard against this, I'm doing this by really creating a mission on two levels. On the first level, I have the mission to my company and to the shareholders of my company. 
That means that I have to produce products for customers that would delight them. In our case, these are enterprise customers we are producing software engineering for. And then for my investors, I have to make sure that we deliver on a very good financial return. And the second is the mission to deliver to the nation and to this generation. In my case, that means helping Nigeria to become a top 10 software engineering country. Most of the other top 10 software engineering countries have 0.3% of their population working as software engineers. Nigeria has the potential to do that. That, if Nigeria achieves that, that would mean 600,000 people working as software engineers, generating $18 billion a year in revenue for this country, effectively replacing Nigeria's oil. I would encourage each founding team to articulate its own dual missions. One to the company, but then even when you're delivering on that, your mission to the nation causes you to go even further when the first set of goals begin to be met. I'm convinced that this movement of tech leaders, if we're really mindful of taking an inclusive approach and making sure we have not just the best 11, but the complete 22 contributing to drive this movement, and we set our goals firmly on serving our nation in this generation so we can deliver a complete victory. Thank you.